seeing a business that we ran for 28 years here before we sold it to Bakersfield Limousine and they took all of our employees and all of our equipment and it's still running today but um, I was pretty much done with that after 28 years. Uh, running a limousine company might seem like a fun thing but we got too big and it was a 24-7 operation. We were taking orders from Chevron in Houston, Chevron in Saudi Arabia, Singapore, and um, brokering all these trips. So um, anyway, I, I am Sorry. the current marketing, di um, marketing director of a company called Chosen Payments. Uh, we process credit cards. We are a member of the Bridal Association and we work pretty much exclusively with associations and their members to provide group discounts on, on processing credit cards. So I travel all over the uh, country um, going to different trade shows and conventions and talking to people about credit card processing. Um, I also am a uh, feature writer for a magazine called LCT, which is Luxury Charter and Tour. It's for the limousine industry and the bus industry. And I've been a writer for the magazine for 15 years. Um, I am the fundraising chair and vice president of League of Dreams, which is an adaptive sports uh, league. How many of you know about League of Dreams? Good. Love it. <clears throat> because League of Dreams, for those of you that don't know, um, we are a, a sports organization for children that are uh, handicapped, disabled. They run bases in wheelchairs, walkers, um, crutches, whatever way they can do it. We have angels, that is people in the community that come out and volunteer to bat for them, to push the wheelchair, to do whatever it takes. But we believe that every child deserves a chance to play. So it's a very important and near and dear thing to, uh, to my heart. I've been involved with numerous other charities. I'm sure you guys all know about Village Fest. Um, <laughs> Village Fest is a charity that raises money for children also. And I just ended a 14 year run as president of that organization, stepping down at the beginning of this year. It was just time. I'm still on the board, but that is, that's, we spend 10 months out of the year planning it and then the event happens in four hours and it's over. <laughs> so. Point leading into that, all of these things require us to promote within the community. They, they involve marketing. If you don't have people buying tickets and they don't know about your event, you're ineffective at anything. So um, one of the things that I do for our clients is we teach little mini seminars like what I'm going to do today. Today we're going to be talking about the difference between marketing and advertising. And there is. And a lot of people tend to blend them <coughs> together. But they're, they're very different. Marketing is a sustained effort, where advertising is a, an impact effort trying to drive you right now. So you can see something on here that it should be very recognizable to you. What is it? It's a Big Mac. It's a Big Mac. So, Big Mac, leave it to the fat boy to use that as an example. So, you see a Big Mac, if you're driving down the road, and you happen to be hungry and it's 11.45 a.m. and you pass a McDonald's the next couple blocks, there's a high likelihood after looking at that, especially if you like Big Macs, that you're gonna stop at McDonald's. And, and that's what that type of ad is. Um, and that burger, when they put that together, each one of those seeds, I can tell you this, each one of those seeds was glued on there individually. You've never gone to McDonald's and seen a Big Mac like that, ever. So for this picture, it has to be the picture perfect ad. And the ad is meant to make you have an impulse, impulse buy. Versus marketing is a sustained effort to build brand recognition. So in the limousine industry, the limousine industry is never gonna be a product that you're gonna advertise for. I mean, if I put a limousine on a picture on a billboard and you drive by it, are you gonna call and get a limo tonight? No, you're not. However, if we keep signs up all over and you go to a Condors game and you see the limousine scene logo on the Jumbotron, you are likely to remember the name limousine scene. And we want you to see that name and we want you to see our palm trees over and over and over because there's gonna come a day when you're gonna have a wedding in your family, you're gonna have a funeral, you're gonna have an anniversary, you're gonna have somebody retiring, you're gonna have something and you're gonna go and you're gonna Google limousines in Bakersfield, California. It was our hope that you would see limousine scene and you would say, I know that company. You don't know that company you know of that company and you've been exposed to it over and over, but that really helps drive sales, name recognition, 
when you have that same name recognition over and over? What is it? What's this logo? The Ritz. When you think of Ritz, what do you think of? Park Place. <laughs> Park Place. Crackers. What else? Crackers. That's crackers. <laughs> Not really where I was going, but quality. The Ritz Carlton. Yeah. High end quality. You see it, and you know. I mean, you know by the brand, the Ritz Carlton, that this is an upscale luxury hotel property. This is not a place that you would just go to spend the night as you were traveling down the road and you need a place to go. That, what's that? A place where you need a place to go. Now, I took something out of this logo. I deleted it on purpose. All right, yeah, that's right. So if we bring it up like this, I've added motel back into it. But do we really need the word motel in it? No. You see that red six against the blue background, and you know from sustained marketing exactly who they are without without anything identifying it except the red six. Um, let's stop right here and think about in this town, in Bakersfield, anybody name a solar company? Sun Any solar? City. Plans. Okay. Sun. What'd you say? Plans. Oasis. Plans. Oasis, I don't. Yeah, they do now. They do? Sun. Okay. But you see, all of these, I mean, I think about it as I'm driving down the road in Bakers Hill listening to the radio, and like, there are so many solar commercials on yeah. TV and on the radio, and like, I don't know how any of them survive in town, because everybody's doing it. Okay, so we have this up here. This is uh, billboards yeah. at a stadium. Land. Is it advertising, or is that marketing? Marketing. Is it? Yeah, no, that's advertisement because there's nothing really so no, there to remember. It's both. Yeah. It's both. Like if you look at it right now, um, you see in the corner, grab some buds. You're at a stadium, they sell bud. Okay, yeah. that could be an impulse to get you to get out of your seat and go get a bud. Investors but Bank is a marketing. When you look at the bank and you see, aren't banks better when they're open? Longest hours of any bank. That is not going to make you leave the stadium to go to the bank. <laughs> right. But you might think the next time you go to your bank to deposit a check or whatever and they're closed at 520, you know what? I might want to go to the bank where they have the longest banking hours. So you have banks up there. You have Jersey 101.5. So you might tune to that radio station. Um, it looks like maybe a Honda car dealership here in the right. You're not going to go buy a Honda because you saw it on a billboard. But what they want you to remember is that Davis dealership is where you want to go when you get a Honda. <laughs> Whose logo is this? Taco Bell. And what does it make you think of? Uh, Chihuahua. <laughs> okay, Chihuahua. Authentic Mexican food. You know, if you think about that, that was a great marketing yeah, campaign. Yeah, it was. Right? I mean, everybody knew the Chihuahua. I took Taco Bell out of there and just put the bell up because I wanted to know what you would think of. What do you think of their food? Yeah. White version of Mexican food. <laughs> and? Cheap food. There you go. That's what I'm looking for right Cheap there. Food. Cheap <laughs> food. That's their marketing sometimes effort. sometimes that's what you're looking for. And, and they make it a point to share that, that they have cheap tacos. <laughs> so when you go there, you know it's going to be cheap. Um, advertising phrases. These are things that you would use in advertising <laughs> that cause impulse buy. On sale now. Limited time offer, buy today, special pricing, limited supply, Facebook special. Um, even if that Facebook special, like I see a little girl I know, well she's not a little girl, a young woman that, that has a, uh, doing facials right now. Just got a place at a salon, she's renting a little spot, she's putting stuff on Facebook every day. Facebook special, this weekend only. Except that next weekend, the same special is showing up. And, and on Thursday, I start seeing it again. On Saturday, I'm having a Facebook special, and it's the same special. So that can be counterproductive, uh -huh. because there's no reason for me to say, I'm gonna go get my wife a gift certificate for that this weekend, because it's a special, and it's only good this weekend. It's like Harbor Freight parking lot sales. Yes. Or, or, or a furniture store going out of business. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> again and again and again. Yeah, more furniture has been doing the same. Like, oh, for yeah, years. that's another so, one. I don't so have to go. That, that, those are all advertising slogans or, or, or words <coughs> that are intended to make you do something right now and say, oh, if I don't, if I don't take care of this you know, today, I'm, I'm going to miss out on the sale price. Where is the best place to advertise today? Where your customers at? 
<laughs> that's that's one. Yeah. Social media. Specific? Instagram. We, Instagram. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Facebook. Mm -hmm. So it used to be Facebook. Now it, it's Instagram. Depends well, on your age. The transition oh. Not yeah. not yeah. yet, but it's coming there. Facebook is still the number one. Let me get to a stat here. So I'm backing it up with somebody else instead of me. Pew Research Center, oh, that little hook is like right over the P, but yep. Pew Research Center is probably the most respected research firm in America, and they do all kinds of surveys. So this survey was conducted in basically one year ago, March 10th, 2018. 73% of all adults had a YouTube account, and 68% of all adults had a Facebook account. I work for a very big credit card company, um, we have 12 branch offices throughout the United States and a corporate office in Moore Park, California. And um, we're a big company, but we do a lot on Facebook. The biggest reason we use Facebook, it is where our customers are. They're trolling there. I'm not gonna get into how to effectively use Facebook here because that's like a whole nother thing. But I will give you an example of how if you, if you use targeted demographics on Facebook correctly, this happened to me yesterday at somebody I know who's coming from Japan to Las Vegas on Saturday never been to Vegas in his life he said I want to go see a cool show what would you recommend I don't know like I'm not a Vegas expert so I googled top shows in Vegas and I saw Cirque du Soleil with special pricing and I opened it to see what the pricing was because I want to tell my friend so later in the day yesterday scrolling through my Facebook and guess what kind of ad I got I got an ad for Cirque du Soleil never been served an ad like that before but targeting mar targeted marketing and Facebook is really really good at it you can drill down to a dentist in Bakersfield California between the age of 32 and 46 years of age living in the zip code 93314 that's how far down you can drill Rosedale. so yep. It is Rosedale. Should I have said like 05 or 06 or... Oh, but, but anyway... I'm assuming up there though, so you're going to skip the YouTube one though because nobody watches the commercials on YouTube and that's coming from someone who has three different YouTube channels with multiple thousands of people on there. So, here's how we use YouTube. We don't run ads on YouTube, but when chosen payments, when we go to a convention, we um, host these parties that we call our legendary parties and we will drop $30,000 and invite 500 people to come to a ballroom and we'll have a band or a DJ and we'll serve hors d'oeuvres and the whole reason that we're doing that is because at some point during the night we're gonna tell that DJ stop that music we're gonna tell that band stop playing and our CEO is gonna go up there on stage and he's gonna say thank you for coming to our party tonight how many of you in the room are chosen payments clients let me see you raise your hand and you see all these hands go up all right the rest of you why are you not our clients we thank you for coming to our party but we want to talk to you our sales reps are running around they have name tags like this if you want to learn more about blah 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 but the other thing we do is we bring in a videographer for the whole night and photographers and we make a video of the night and we have people like the two of you sitting together talking and we make really creative videos and I mean if you go on YouTube tonight and you put in chosen payments you'll see video after video sometimes it's me talking at an event like this but people love to see themselves in videos they love to see them their faces <coughs> in collages of photos so when they leave we tell them hey check out our YouTube page we'll be putting a video up of this party up on the uh, on YouTube in one week and then we have people coming there we don't use YouTube to try to land customers we use YouTube to try to brand ourselves and get people to remember the name chosen payments chosen payments nobody's gonna watch a YouTube video and then turn around and call us and say hey sign me up right now because I just saw your really cool video and I was in it so I should be chosen <laughs> um, local companies are hit up all the time for donations so you guys are all in the, the wedding industry I was there for 25 years I know every day somebody's calling and saying hey can you donate a limousine can you donate a catered meal can you donate a trip to Hawaii Leland you know everybody wants a donation and and I love when people tell me we're a nonprofit organization yeah 
well, I'm a for-profit organization, <laughs> and when I give all my stuff to you, I'm not making any money. But there is a different way to look at that. Every time you donate something, it gives you the opportunity to market your product. If you do it right, there's a good way to use marketing. Let me count the ways. Mic time. I never give anything away without asking, can I come and talk on the mic about my company? Can I share with you about my company? Or do you just want me to give you something for free? Of course we're going to let you talk. MC mentions and plugs. Okay, you're not going to let me talk? Okay, let me give you a little piece of paper of what I want your MC to say about my company and, and thank us for donating. Get your company out there. Oh, are you guys having a printed program like that? Well, I'll donate to you, but I'd like to have a quarter page ad in the program. Ask for something. You're giving away something. You might as well get value out of it. Banner displays. How many people are going to be at your event? Are you going to have 500 people there? Good, because out of 500 people, only three of them are going to need a limousine in the next 12 months. So can I put a banner up there so people will recognize my name? I'm helping you. You help me. Promoters never have a problem with that. When they're asking you for something, if you say, all I want to do is hang a banner, done. Tickets to the event. There's nobody that's going to promote your business better than you. So say, hey, can I have a couple tickets to the event? Um, hold on, hold on. I, I just was checking something. I did it tonight, here. Huh? <laughs> so I got some tickets to go to something. Um, but you want to be there to promote hey, your own what business. Are those tickets too? I want to go. Um, it's good, because I have two, and I don't have anyone to go with me. So we're going your to Your wife leave. isn't going with you? No, she's leaving to Seattle tomorrow. <laughs> as previously mentioned, I'll be alone through Saturday. Um, 2019 Business Expo. Oh, yeah, Thursday night. Okay, Thursday night. Um, another way is using gift cards or loyalty cards. Does anybody here use gift cards? Leland? Greatest thing in the world. Gift cards. People will come in and load them up. They'll say, I want to buy a gift card. I want to pay $300. You load it on the card. You hand them a card. Somebody comes and uses a card. They put $130 on it. They throw the card in a drawer. They never use it again. You keep the money forever. You can't. You can't like really spend it and not expect to give it back because if they pay for it legally, you have to return it if they want it redeemed. But I'm telling you, they don't come to redeem and they don't use it. They'll use part of it. Or they buy it and they give it as a gift to somebody else. But here's what I did. Gift cards, limousine scene would give out $80,000 a year in gift cards. Any organization that came and asked us for a gift card, here you go, here you go, 250, 250, 250. You know how many were redeemed? 30% of all the cards that I gave out were redeemed. The rest of them were never redeemed. But you know what I got out of it? I got mic time, I got the banner, I got my name in the program, I got everything, and I didn't have to really give up anything because they just didn't redeem them. Loyalty cards, a little different. Loyalty cards, have become a lot more high tech lately where you can uh, issue somebody a loyalty card and tie it into a system where when they drive by your business, they get a text message that says, Foster Freeze is selling ice cream cones for a dime right now. You're a block away. Um, those are then loyalty you pull programs. In. Yeah, then you pull in. Oh, what, a dime? Yes, I have time to stop. So um, I highly advocate using gift cards. They're great for promoting your business. They're especially good if somebody says, um, like in your business, Janet, you know, where you, you're not bringing a tangible product to give them, but you're gonna provide services down the road um, to be able to say, here's a gift card, I'll give the gift card away. And then they're talking about your business or if it's a silent auction, you, there's your paperwork out there. I wouldn't put the real gift card out there because somebody would take it. Um, so what can I do to um, increase brand awareness in my community? Participate in Chamber of Commerce events, things like this, service clubs, serve on charity committees. If you know of a charity, I'll tell you what, there's no better way to promote your business than to volunteer your time to work in a charity and talk about what you do with all the committee members and let them be your ambassadors that go and tell all their friends and then tell them you know, how great you are that you're helping out this charity and you're donating product or service. Product displays at events, really, really a good way to market your business. Um, so again, you know, if somebody's asking you to donate something, ask them to donate a little space for you to have your, uh, have your display. So thanks for allowing me to share this educational information with you tonight. We are the official processor yep. of... 
Oh, yeah, we missed something really important there. <laughs> we are the official credit card processor of the Bridal Association, where all members of the association get discounted credit card processing. And if we can't beat the rates that you're currently paying for credit card processing, we will pay your Bridal Association dues for one full year. Or, not to take away from you, Kyle, if you want me to give you 500 cash, hey. I'll do that too. A lot of cash, <laughs> or pay for your association dues. That's my presentation. Thanks for sitting through it. Very nice. Any questions? Any questions? No, you were very informative. All right, I like that. Wow, testimonial. He answered all the questions. <laughs> I tried.